Hello dear students, um, as you are preparing for the ordinary level examinations, welcome to lesson 2A of the GCE Math Panel Online Preps. I am Dr. Miles, your host, and we go directly into the lesson. The first part of this lesson is about rounding off and it consists of place value and value. We will start with the concepts of place value and value and let us consider the number below. The place value is all about the position of the digits in the number. For example, in primary school, we talked about hundreds, tens and units. Those are the various positions occupied by the digits in a number. There are the same concepts we are going to be applying here. So in this number, beginning after the decimal point or marker, the first number after the decimal point or marker occupies a position called tenth. This tenth is spelled with th at the end. The th means on ten. So the three there is three over ten. The next position is five. That five is five over one hundred, also called five hundredths, with th at the end. Then. 8 is 8 over 1000 from the decimal point is that this is the third digit so it's over 1000 since 1000 has three zeros and the, the one there is 1 over 10,000 we can now move to the right hand side to the left hand side rather of the decimal point or the marker and the digits or position immediately before the decimal point or marker is a unit or whole number. Then 7 occupies the position of tens without the th, tens. 0 occupies the position of hundreds, 6 the position of thousands, and 9 the position of ten thousands. Let's get the value of each digit in this number as an example. We begin after the decimal marker. The value is the exact quantity it represents. Place value is about position. Value is the exact quantity it represents. So the 3 here represents 0 0.3 or 3 over 10 or 3 tenths. 5 represents or the value of 5 is 0 0.05 or the same as 5 on 100 or 5 hundredths. 8 is 0 0.008 or 8 on 1,000 or 8,000 and 1 is 1 on 10,000 or 0 0.0001. Before the decimal point, 2 occupies the position of 2 units or just 2. 7 is 70 or 7 tenths. 0 is 0 or 0 hundred. 6 has a value of 6,000. And 9 has a value of 90 thousands. Rounding up or rounding down consists or comprise of what you call rounding off. So rounding off is made up of either round, rounding up or rounding down. And we round up if the digit is 5 or more. We round up, that is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we round up. And we round down if it is less than 5, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we round down. You must first move to the position, this is a remark, you must first move to the position of that place value before you round up or down. For example, round off 96072 to the nearest 10. So the first thing I'll do is to identify the position of the 10, like 10s and units. The position of 10 is occupied by 7. Now I ask myself this question, is the 2 after it's going to affect it the answer is no because when it is less than five you round down so it seems you not affect it the digit after the seven will not affect it so the seven remains the same and we replace the digit after seven by zero as you can see then round this number to the nearest hundred we move to the position of hundred which is occupied by zero and we ask ourselves the number after zero it is seven so it's going to affect this position so we round this up to one and the zero becomes one now the digit after the one we replace them by zeros 
Example 3, to round this number to the nearest thousand, the position of thousand here is at 6. The 4 after it will not affect it, so we just replace everything after the 6 by zeros. That's the nearest thousand. Example 4, round off this number to the nearest whole number or the nearest unit. This position of the whole number here is 2. After the decimal points, we have a value of 3, so we round down, it's not going to affect it. So the nearest whole number, the decimal points, and all everything after it should not be included. So this number will just become by just wiping everything after from the decimal points. Example 5. Round off this number to the nearest tenth. Tenth means the first decimal, the, the position after the decimal marker, immediate position. So this is going to give us, the position here is 3, and the 5 after it will affect it, so this 3 now becomes 4. Next, we have to round off this number to the nearest 100. Position of 100 is 5. It will affect it, so it becomes 6. And since they say the nearest 100, anything after the 100 is wiped because we are after the decimal point now. So everything after the 6, we wipe them off. Unlike before the decimal points are replaced by zeros, after the decimal points, we wipe them off. So thank you so much for watching and our next lesson is on significant figures. Don't forget to subscribe as we have so much that is still to be presented. Thank you, welcome and bye bye. I am your host Dr. Miles. Welcome, dear students, to lesson 2C of GCA Ordinary Level Preparations Online. I am Dr. Miles, your host, and in this lesson, we are looking at significant, significant figures. The first significant figure is the first non-zero digit to the left of a number. Let us take, for example, this number. The first non-zero digit in this number is 8. So the first significant figure or digit in this number is 8. The second significant digit or figure is 1. The third significant figure or digit is 5. And the fourth is 7. Let's take an example. We have the number 0 0.008157 and this number can be expressed as 0 0.008 to one significant figure. Note, the first significant figure is the first digit that is not a zero and the first significant figure here is eight. So to express this number to one significant figure, we move to that position eight and we ask ourselves this question. Will the one after eight affect it? The answer is no. So to one significant figure, this number becomes 0 0.008. Now to two significant figures, it becomes 0 0.0082. Note that the second significant digit here is the 1. But the 5 after 1 is going to affect 1 because you round up and add to 1 to have 2. This same number to three significant figures gives us 0 0.0016. And to four significant figures, it is the same number. If they ask you to write this number to five significant figures, just add a zero after the seven. Another example, you have 7085.0380. In this number, the first significant digit is seven because it is the first digit that is not a zero. The second significant digit is zero. This zero becomes significant because it's after the first significant figure. Then, the 8 is the third significant figure, right to the eighth significant figure, as you can see clearly. Let's take another example. We have the number 
this number to one significant goal give us 40. Note, the first significant goal here is 3. But 5 is going to affect it. So we round up to 1 and add to 3 gives us 4. And since this number before the decimal point is 35, when you round up, it gives us 40. We can now erase everything from the decimal point and uh, write words. So this gives us 40 to one significant figure. To two significant figures, note that the second significant figure here occurs at 5. But the 7 after 5 is going to affect it. So we round up to 1 and add to this number. And this number becomes 36 to two significant figures. So everything from the after the second significant digit is erased or wiped off. So three significant figures, we have 35.7. The zero will not affect the seven. And to four significant figures, we have 35.71. Some remarks. Note, you must be very, very careful. 1.0 is said to have two significant figures or digits or expressed to two significant figures. 100.3 has four significant figures or digits. This is where you should take note where I have written in red. 130 and 250 are these these two numbers are to two significant figures, not three. Note when a number is a whole number like this, it has no decimal. The zeros that occur at the end are not considered to be significant figures they are not counted so 130 has just two significant figures 250 has just two significant figures now let's look at this other number you have 10 and 100 10 has just one significant figure and 100 equally has just one significant figure similarly 1000 has just one significant figure however 0 0.020 note that the first significant figure is a two and the zero that follows is significant has two significant figures. Now we can equally look at decimal places. Decimal places. We count decimal places from the decimal point or the decimal marker rightwards. Thus, it will be expected that the number is a decimal number. If a number is not a decimal number, then it will not really make sense to be talking about decimal places or approximations. So the first decimal place is the first digit that occurs after the decimal marker or point. The second, the third here is eight and the fourth is nine. Note that ZP is an acronym for decimal place or is approximation for decimal place let's take some examples on decimal places explain 67.5297 to one decimal place the first decimal place is five the two after it will not affect it so to one decimal place we stop at the five and this will not be affected it gives us 67.5 to two decimal places we have 67.53 why 0 0.53 not 0 0.52 because 9 will affect the 2 then to 3 significant to 3 decimal places rather we have 67.530 530 because the third decimal place occurs at 9 but 7 will affect the 9 this way you have to be careful as well so when we round up the 7 to 1 and add at 9 it gives us 10 but we cannot write 10 at that position so we write 0 and carry 1 and that 1 is carried to 2 that now gives us 2 plus 1 giving us 3 to four decimal places, this number is the same. And to write this number to five decimal places, just add a zero after the seven. Remarks on decimal places. 2.97 is equal to 3.0 to one decimal place. Note that the first decimal place is at nine, but the seven will affect it. So you have to round up, you have 10, but you cannot write 10, you write zero and carry one to two, that gives us 3.0. 5.1 is equal to or can be written as 5.10 to two decimal places so to write this number in one decimal place to two decimal places just add a zero 24 is equal to 24.0 to one decimal place 15.4 
is equal to 15 to the nearest whole number. The word integer may be used in the place of whole number. Note that integers are whole numbers. So our next lesson will be on time and temperature. On time and temperature. Please don't forget to subscribe and invite your friends to equally watch these videos so that their performance will be better in the upcoming exams. Thank you so much. Subscribe. And I have been your host, Dr. Miles. Welcome to the GCE Maths panel. Bye bye. Greetings to all the ordinary level candidates preparing for mathematics ordinary level and welcome to the GCE Maths panel. In this lesson, we are looking at time and temperature. We begin with the concepts of the 12 hour clock and the 24 hour clock. Note the words AM and PM are never used when discussing time using the 24 hour clock system. We mention just the hours, for example, 15 hours 30, meaning 3.30 PM. Note as well that midday is PM, that is 12.00, and midnight is AM when talking about the 12 hour clock system. AM stands for ante meridian and PM for post meridian, as you already know from geography. Some countries call the 24 hour clock system French time. Equally note that the first 12 hours are the same for both systems, though the, tw the 12 hour clock at AM. Secondly, for the next 12 hours, that is from the 13th hour, we add time to have the corresponding time on the 24 hour clock system. From midday to 11.59 p.m., the 12 hour clock system uses 12 p.m. to 11.59 p.m., while the 24 hour clock system uses 12 hours 00 to 23 hours 59. Midnight for the 24 hour clock system is 0000 or 0 hour 00. Midnight is 12 am for the 12 hour clock system. Note, midnight is am. Let us take some examples. 11 a.m. We are converting from the 12 hour clock system to the 24 hour clock system. So 11 a.m. corresponds to, note that the first 11 hours are the same. So it corresponds to 11 hour 00. 2 15 p.m. 2 15 p.m. is the second half of the day. So I'm going to add this to 12 hours to have the corresponding fresh time. So I'll have 12 plus 2, which is 14, 15. So 14 hours 15. 5 10 a.m. is during the first 12 hours of the day, so I'll just maintain it. You have 5 hour 10. 10 45 p.m. is the second half of the day, so I'll add this to 12 hours to have the French time or the 24 hour clock system time. That gives us 22 hours 45. Now, this is the trick 12 20 p.m. Note that 12 20 p.m. Is in, which is in the afternoon will be maintained on the 24 hour clock system to have 12 hour 20. However, 12 20 a.m. 12 20 a.m. is during the first 12 hours of the day. So it is going to be at the first hour of the day on the 24 hour clock system is zero. So you have zero hour 20. Take note of this. In these other examples, or in example two, we are converting from the 24 hour clock system to the 12 hour clock system. So 11 hour corresponds to, so these are the first 12 hours of the day, so it is maintained 11 a.m. 
now am comes in because we are talking about the 12 hour clock system 6 hours 25 the same thing 6 25 am 23 hours 40 now this is in the, the, the this is during the second 12 hours of the day so that is pm so we subtract 12 hours from 23 hours 40 and that will give us 11 40 pm 19 hours 22 this is during the second hour, uh, second 12 hours of the day so we subtract 12 from 19 that gives us 7 22 pm 12 hour 35 note that 12 hour 35 is in the afternoon so this will give us the same thing 12 hour 35 but now it is pm 0 hour 11 0 hour 11 means 11 minutes after midnight so that will give us 12 11 am okay these concepts have been explained let's take some other examples that you mostly see in paper one this involves GMT, GMT and local time that is standard time and local time so GMT Greenwich Mean Time is standard time and the time in any other zone is measured relative to GMT time in some cities are ahead of GMT for example Paris and other cities are behind so Paris is one hour ahead of GMT so we say it is at GMT plus one others are behind like Chicago seven hours behind GMT so we say it's a GMT minus seven and other cities like London and Accra have the same time as at GMT so they're at GMT plus zero if you want to put minus the same thing just GMT zero if time at GMT if time at GMT plus four is 11 p.m what would be the time at GMT so at GMT plus 4 it is 11 p.m. so to move back to GMT we can use what we call the number line for time so if it is at GMT plus 4 we just have to subtract 4 from 11 p.m. and we'll have the time at GMT and that will give us 7 p.m. so 11 p.m. minus 4 hours gives us 7 p.m. Let's take some good examples. Cameroon is one hour ahead of GMT. If the time at GMT is 11.45 a.m., what will be the time in Cameroon? So Cameroon is one hour ahead of GMT. So if GMT is 11.45 a.m. and Cameroon is ahead, we just have to add one hour. So Cameroon is at GMT plus one. So GMT plus one hour gives us 12 45 p.m. 11 45 a.m. plus 1 hour gives us 12 45 p.m. Example 2 standard time is 23 hours 30. What will be the time in Jamaica, which is 5 hours behind GMT? Note GMT is standard time. And if Jamaica is 5 hours behind, we just have to subtract 5 from 23 hours, and that will give us 18 30 or 18 hours 30. Example 3, Ankara, Turkey is 3 hours ahead of GMT and Ferrando, Brazil is 2 hours behind GMT. If Ankara time is 12.15 a.m., what's Fernando's time? So Fernando time is 3 hours ahead of GMT and Ankara time is, rather Ankara time is 3 hours ahead of GMT and Fernando is 2 hours behind GMT. So the time difference is five hours. So Fernando is five hours behind Ankara. Therefore, to have the time at Fernando, we have to subtract five hours from Ankara time. And that gives us 2.15 a.m. minus five hours, which is equal to 9.15 p.m. So the time at Fernando is 9.15 p.m. Example four, the match between FC Barcelona and Real Madrid is to take place in Spain at 11 a.m. And Spain is at GMT plus 2. That is 2 hours ahead of GMT. Maldin is in Australia. My friend Maldin is in Australia at GMT plus 10. At what local time should he watch the time or the match in Australia? Here we have to note that um, Spain is at GMT plus 2 while australia is at gmt plus 10 so the time difference is eight hours 
eight hours. Australia is ten hours ahead of Spain. Since the, the time difference is eight hours and is ahead, he has to watch the match at eleven a.m. plus eight hours. So he has to watch at seven p.m. At seven p.m. Otherwise, you miss miss the match. Or you can give it in the twenty-four hour clock system, nineteen hours. Example 5, which is on temperature. The temperature of a room at 8 a.m. is 22 degrees Celsius and the temperature rises by 1 degree Celsius at intervals of 1 hour. What will be the temperature at midday? So after every 1 hour, the temperature increases by 1 degree Celsius. In the next 1 hour, increases by 1 degree Celsius and so on. So what will be the temperature at midday? Knowing the temperature at 8 a.m. is 22 degrees Celsius. So from 8 a.m. to midday, we have four hours. And this four hours will correspond to a rise of four degrees Celsius. Since each hour corresponds to one degree Celsius, four hours correspond to four degrees Celsius. And since the temperature is rising, the new temperature will be 22 degrees Celsius plus four degrees Celsius, giving us 26 degrees Celsius. Example six, if the temperature at town A is minus three degrees Celsius, and that at town B is 16 degrees Celsius. This is the past question. What is the increase in temperature from town A to town B? This is just like the number line. Increase in temperature just means the temperature difference. So we have 16 degrees Celsius minus minus 30 minus minus 3 degrees Celsius. And this will give us 19 degrees Celsius. Note that the minus minus not separated by any number is equal to a plus. That's like minus times minus. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. This is the GCE Math Panel. You can visit our blog for many other videos and on YouTube as well. And our next lesson is on ratio and proportion. I have been Dr. Miles, your host. Bye bye. Hello and this is lesson 2D, ordinary level, captioned ratio and proportion. Welcome to the panel. I am Dr. Miles, your host. We begin by looking at the concepts of ratios and we will use examples. Express as a ratio in its simplest form 25 to 40 to 35. The first thing to note here is that 5 is the highest common factor or greatest common divisor. And so we have to divide all through by 5 to express this ratio in the simplest form. So dividing all through by 5, we will have 5 into 25, 5 times into 40, 8 times, and into 35, 7 times. This therefore makes this ratio in its simplest form to be 5 to 8 to 7. Example number 2. Divide 200 sweets in the ratio 2 to 3 to 5 to Anne, Bill, and Clint respectively. In a question where the word respectively is not mentioned, you have to assume respectively. I know teachers will normally not forget, but it can happen. Okay, so the ratio here, we have the ratio sum to be 2 plus 3 plus 5, giving us 10. So we can say that these 200 suites were uh, divided into 10 parts, and each of them received various parts. That's 2 parts, 3 parts, and 5 parts, respectively. We can now get and share. So and get two parts out of ten parts times the total of two hundred, which is equal to forty suites. While bill three corresponds to bill because his name is mentioned second. While bill gets three parts out of ten parts of the two hundred suites, and that gives us sixty suites. The last part of the ratio corresponds to Clint's, that is 5. So Clint's share will be 5 parts on 10 parts times the 200 suites, and that gives us 100 suites. 
note at the end if you add all of their shares it should give us 200 tweets if it does not it means there's a problem some way so you can troubleshoot example three an amount of a suite was shared to x y and z respectively in the ratio two to three to four if y received 12 suites find x share and b the amount a a lot of students usually make a lot of mistakes on questions of this nature in which the total amount a is not given when the amount a is not given the procedure is a bit different so when the amount or the total amount is not given you have to be very careful and in this particular question the total amount has not been given but they have given us a share of one of the members and this share is z share this share is rather y's share because they said y received 12 suites and looking at the ratio the part that corresponds to y because they said x to y is to z y is the second that is mentioned so it corresponds to three parts it therefore means of the total y received three parts and we can use ratios to solve this so the shortest way to do it is to say y's share which is three parts corresponds to 12 suites therefore we can get x share directly because from the ratio x gets two parts so x share which is two parts will be equal to how many suites unknown so we can now cross multiply to obtain x share and x share will be equal to 2 times 12 divided by 3 so we have 2 times 12 divided by 3 and that gives us 8 suites alternatively a student may look for the total amount a and then from there he or she now looks for the value of x but this one is direct it's one step note if you first of all look for the total amount and in the b part of the question you still have to look for the amount and then you have to recopy what you have done now let's move to the b part of the question to find the total amount a we can equally still use ratios so since y received three parts and the total is equal to nine parts since y received an amount of 12 suites which corresponds to three parts so we now say three parts out of the total the, the total number of parts here is nine that's two plus three plus uh, four which gives us nine so three over nine times the total let the amount be a times a will give us 12. therefore our a will be equal to we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 9 on 3 that is to multiply both sides by 9 on 3 since we have 3 on 9 the reciprocal of 3 on 9 is 9 on 3 and that will give us a total of 36 suites so the amount is 36 suites equally using ratios we can say from y three parts corresponds to 12 suites therefore nine parts correspond to the amount a and when we cross multiply we still get 36 um, a suite example four the ratio of men to women to children in Bermuda city is five to x to eight if there are forty thousand kids find a the number of men and b the value of x if the total population is one hundred thousand people so from this question men's to women's to children is five to x to eight and there are forty thousand children this 40,000 children corresponds to eight parts. So to get the number of men directly, men corresponds to five parts. So we say five parts is equal to the number of men because we know very well that the total amount has not been given. So this gives us cross multiplying. We have men, number of men to be equal to five times 40,000 on eight, which is equal to 25,000. Now we cannot get the number of we cannot get the part of the ratio that corresponds to the number of women without first of all knowing the number of women so we start by looking at the number of women we already know that there are 40,000 kids and from the a part we know that there are 25,000 men so the remaining part should be the number of women and this will give us 
a hundred thousand minus twenty five thousand minus forty thousand, giving us thirty five thousand women. From here, if a part corresponds to forty thousand, then x part will correspond to thirty five thousand using ratio, and this will give us x to be equal to eight times thirty five thousand divided by forty thousand, which is equal to seven. So the value of x is seven. Example five. Carus are shared to three sisters, Mandy, Cindy, and Susie, respectively, in proportion of their ages. Of the 105 carus, each received, this one now is about proportion. So you receive depending on your age. The older you are, the more you receive. And this is direct proportion. So here, Cindy receives her age over the total sum of ages times 105. That gives us 45 carus. Mandy receives 11 on 15 plus 11 plus 9 times 105 calories, giving us 35 calories, 33 calories. Finally, Susie receives 9 on sum of ages times 105 calories in total. And that gives us a total of 27 calories. Thank you so much. And this has been the GCE Maths panel. And next sub lesson will be on number bases and map scales. Please don't forget to take the quiz that follows these lessons. Stay tuned, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to the math panel. On this lesson is on number bases and map scales. Don't forget to subscribe and follow the lessons detailly. We begin with the concept of number bases. To so take some examples, to convert from one base to base 10, there are two steps to insert paths beginning from zero and moving towards the left, that is from right to left. Secondly, we expand and simplify the number. Let's take this example. To convert 345 base 6 to base 10, you write down the 345 base 6. There are three digits, so you insert paths from 0. The first will be 0, the second will be 1, and the last one has a power of 2. Note it is from left, from right to left. Then we expand 3 times 6 to the power 2. We are using the base to expand, unlike, just like in base 10. The next plus 4 times 6 to the power 1 plus 5 times 6 to the power 0. Or for the last digit that carries a power of 0, you can just write plus 5. It's okay because 6 to the power 0 is 1. We now simplify. 6 to the power 2 is 36, not 12. So we have 3 times 36 plus 4 times 6 plus 5 times 1. And when you sum all these, it will give us 137 base 10. If you write the answer without putting the base in base 10, you are correct. Because everything we are doing in normal life is in base 10, except the base is indicated. If the base is not indicated, it means you are working in base 10. Equally note, the digits in base 2 are just zeros and ones. In base 3, you have 0, 1, and 2. It therefore means a number cannot be in base 2 and you find a digit of 3 in it. The highest digit in base 2 is 1. The highest digit in base 3 is 2. The highest digit in base 4 is 3 and so on. And the highest digit in base 10 is 9. So you can have a number like 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, and so on, base 2. The highest digit in that number can never be more than 1. And in base 5, you can have uh, 4, 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, and so on. But you can never have 5 in base 5. So note. Then, to convert from one base to base 10, as we have just mentioned, you insert the pass, expand, and simplify the number. Let's take another example. Convert 1, 0, 1, 1, 2 to base 10. So you write down the number insert the paths beginning from zero and from right to left so you have zero one two three 
we now expand the first one will be 1 times 2 to the power 3 plus 0 times 2 to the power 2 you can skip this one because it's 0 you know the value is going to be 0 this one can be skipped it's still correct plus 1 times 2 to the power 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power 0 note you can just write 1 because 2 to the power 0 is 1 so we simplify we'll have 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 and that gives us a value of 1 1 base 10. now to convert from base 10 to any other base these are the rules you have to follow you have to divide continuously by the new base and at the end when you have finished your division you take the remainders and you read those remainders from bottom to top let's take an example to illustrate divide continuously read the answer from bottom to top convert 15 base 10 to base 3 so i'm going to divide continuously 15 divided by 3 gives us 5 the remainder is 0 the remainders are very important 5 divided by 3 goes once remainder 2 and 1 divided by 3 gives us 0 remainder 1 when you have 0 remainder anything it means you have come to the end of the continuous division you can now read your answer from bottom to top and this will give us 1 2 0 base 3 another example you have convert 13 base 10 to base 2 continuous division we are dividing 13 by 2 continuously 13 divided by 2 gives us 6 remainder 1 6 by 2 gives us 3 remainder 0 3 by 2 gives us 1 remainder 1 and 1 by 2 gives us gives us a value of 0 remainder 1 when you get 0 remainder something then you have come to the end so our answer right from bottom to top give us 1 1 0 1 base 2 let's move to the next part of this particular sub lesson which is on sales let's take this one example the past question before we move on to the map scales example if 24 base x equals 16 find x yeah you must know that the 16 is 16 base 10 the hint here is that you have to make the bases the same and it will be easier for us to convert everything to base 10 here not to base x in fact always convert everything to base 10 when you have such type of questions so 24 base x to base 10 will give us 2 times x to the power 1 plus 4 times x to the power 0 or just plus 4 this will give us 2x plus 4 now that the bases are the same this number is now in base 10 you can now equate the bases so 2x plus 4 is equal to 16 2x will be equal to 12 when you subtract 4 from both sides and x will be equal to 6 when you divide both sides by 2. another example you have if 1y base 8 equals 12 find y note equally that the 12 here is in base 10. so we convert everything to base 10 we will have 1 times 8 to the power 1 plus y or plus y times 8 to the power 0 this gives us 8 plus y now this number is in base 10 and it's equal to 12 so our y will be equal to 4 we can now move to the second part of the uh, this sub lesson which is on scales in this lesson we'll be looking at map scales linear and area scales it is difficult to draw the exact length of a road or size of a city on a paper therefore a scale is needed similarly you cannot have a paper to draw your house exactly as it is therefore we need what we can use to actually bring that real life diagram on paper and here the concept of scales comes in a scale of 1 to 200 means one unit on map represents 200 units on land if i'm working with centimeters i'll say one centimeter on the map is equal to 200 centimeters on land if it's centimeters it should be centimeters 
or one meter on map represents 200 meters on land so linear scales because there are two main types of scales you're looking at we have linear scales and area scales for linear scales it is all about length or distance about length or distance if one centimeter on land represents five meters on land the scale will be written as one centimeter to five meters but this scale has not been simplified because i am seeing centimeters and meters so i have to actually simplify it to make everything to be in either meters or centimeters it would be good for me to make everything to be in the smaller unit so that I can easily divide all right so in this case i will have one centimeter to 500 centimeters note that 100 centimeters make one meter therefore five meters is 500 centimeters and you can cancel out the centimeters and you'll be left with a scale of one to five hundred equally one hundred thousand centimeters makes one kilometer let's take another example on a map of scale one is to five thousand the distance between towns a and b is 80 centimeters find the actual distance in kilometers so the scale has been given as one centimeter is to five thousand centimeters therefore 80 centimeters on the paper will present how many centimeters on land we saw for x and that will give us four hundred thousand centimeters the answer is okay but now the question requires us to give our answer in kilometers and from the recall below we know that 100,000 centimeters makes one kilometer so we divide by a hundred thousand and this will give us a distance of four kilometers when you take the quiz you will see questions like this and even past questions another example to find the real or actual area on a linear scale you either multiply linear scale by itself or you find the real length and the real width and calculate the area like we mentioned before there are two types of scales linear scales and area scales when you are working with areas what you need is an area scale and an area scale is given by dimension times dimension know that area is length times width for, for, for short depending on the shape so if actually i am giving an example like this one example one on a map of scale one is to 100 a rectangular plot of land measures six centimeters by four centimeters what is the actual area of the plot what i have to note here is the, the scale that has been given is a linear scale i can do this pro i can answer this question in two ways i will find the real length the real length will be six centimeters times 100 to have the real length is 600 centimeters and the real width four centimeters times 100 that the 100 is from the scale that gives us 400 centimeters now the real area will be length times width which is 600 times 400 that gives us 240,000 centimeters squared or squared centimeters i can equally decide to give my answer in meters here the real length will be equal to 600 centimeters which is equal to six meters real width 400 centimeters which is equal to four meters and the area will be six times four which is 24 squared meters or i can find the area scale area scale is given by linear scale times itself so one times one is one and 100 times 100 is 10,000. so the area scale is one is to ten thousand i will now find my area from, from the on the map which is six centimeters times four centimeters and multiply this area by the area scale that gives us times ten thousand which is called 240,000 centimeter squared and it gives us the same answer you can divide by a hundred by one uh, ten thousand rather to have to have the area in square meters method one is preferred thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe as we move on 
to the next lessons that we'll look at standard form and a few tricks in numbers thank you so much stay tuned and bye bye welcome to the math panel in this particular lesson we are looking at some exam tricks on fractions as well as standard forms let's begin by taking some examples i used two feet of my money what fraction will be left so if i use two feet of my money the fraction left will be one minus two feet and that gives us three feet when you simplify Example 2, Jenny spends a third of her allowance on sweets and a quarter of the remainder on fruits. What fraction was spent? What fraction remains? So, the amount or the fraction spent on sweets is one third. So, from the spending on sweets, we have one minus one third, which is two thirds that is left after this expenditure on sweets. Now the set of the remainder, this is where you should take note of the remainder. It therefore means I have to get the remainder first and look for a quarter of this remainder. The remainder here is two thirds. So a quarter of two thirds will give me one seat, which means she spent one seat on fruits and two thirds was left before this one seat was spent so she spends one third on sweets and one seat on fruits the total spent is given by one third plus one seat which is equal to a half and therefore the fraction left is one minus a half which is equal to a half let's take another example 20 percent of fuel is used by a car and a half of the remainder so our emphasis here is of the remainder on a generator what fraction is remaining so 20 percent is used by a car and a half of the remainder so let's first start by looking at 20 percent when 20 percent has been used 20 percent is one feet so the fraction that is left after 20 percent is used is one minus one feet which is four feet after foiling the car we are now being told that a half of this remainder the remainder is four feet so a half of four feet which is two feet is used by the generator so the total fraction used is one feet plus two feet which is equal to three feet and therefore the remaining fraction is one minus three feet which is two feet equally note that to convert from fractions to percentages we just multiply by 100 percent for example one quarter to a percentage gives one on four times 100 percent which is called 25 percent similarly to convert from decimals to percentages we just multiply by a hundred as well for example 0 0.125 say percentage should be equal to one 0 0.125 times a hundred percent which gives us 12.5%. Let's now just review some few basics on standard form. A number of the form A times 10 to the power N is said to be in standard form, where A lies between ranges from 0 from above to 10 from below. So it lies between 0 and 10. And the number n is an integer. These are some examples. You have 2.15 times 10 to the power 5, 3.78 times 10 to the power minus 3. These numbers are in standard form. Recall, 35.93 times 10 to the power 6 is not in standard form. The decimal point must be after the first digit and that first digit should be a whole number 
All right, write the following in standard form. You have 21.5 times 10 to the power 5. Note that the decimal points must be after the 2. So this gives us now, when you move the decimal points to the position between 1 and 2, it means you are multiplying all through now by 10. Or you have to add times 10 to the power 1. That will give us 2.15 times 10 to the power 5 times 10 to the power 1, which is times 10 to the power 6. Equal is 601.3 times 10 to the power minus 3 is equal to 6.013 times 10 to the power minus 1. There are two decimal places movements or there are two movements to the left. When you move to the left, it means you are multiplying to the power. You are multiplying by 10 to a positive power. When you move to the left, you are multiplying by 10 to a positive power. So that positive power here is 10 to the power 2 and 10 to the power 2 times 10 to the power minus 3 is 10 to the power minus 1. Example number 3, you have this number to simplify and we must simplify as we ought to. So we can work as follows. We take the numbers that do not contain the, the, the 10 raised to, the power, to various powers. And we have 12.5 times 0 0.08, all that on 32.0. We simplify this part. Then for the powers, you have 10 to the power minus 1 times 10 to the power 9 divided by 10 to the power minus 4. So we just subtract. And this will give us 0 0.03125 times 10 to the power 12. But this is not in standard form. So this will finally be 3.125 times 10 to the power minus 2 times 10 to the power 12, which gives us 3.125 times 10 to the power 10. So thank you very much. And don't forget to attempt the quiz. Attempt the quiz because at the end of each chapter, we have quizzes. Attempt the quiz and don't forget to subscribe. We are equally on Facebook and we'll be having live classes uh, every weekend as well as quizzes and mocks at the end of each month. Tell your friends and share this information with others to better their results. Bye-bye.